Praise the Lord, everyone, and welcome to the Victory Assured broadcast. This is Pastor Whitfield, and it's my pleasure to share the word of the Lord with you on today. Today, we're going to be talking about rejection. We're going to be going to Isaiah, the 53rd chapter, and we're going to look at a few verses there, and we're going to talk about some of the traits and characteristics of rejection. The whole purpose of our ministry is to share the word of the Lord, to make it relevant to our everyday life, to help us to gain the victory in Christ Jesus. Because Jesus said that he came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. So let us pray and we'll go right into the word of the Lord. Father, we thank you in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, from whom all of your blessings flow. Father, we pray that as we go into this subject, we know that many of us have dealt with this. Some of us are dealing with this right now. And some of us, God, will about to enter into circumstances where we're going to be rejected. Allow this word in the name of Jesus Christ to be the source of healing, the source of strength, the source of deliverance from this vicious spirit in the name of Jesus Christ so that we all can ensure and enjoy the victory that you've granted for us, your people. And Father, we just thank you in Jesus' name we pray, amen. So as we go into the word of the, of the Lord today, we're looking at Isaiah, the 53rd chapter. I'm going to extract a few verses there, but in your, it's in your spare time, read the book or the chapter 53 of Isaiah in, your, in its entirety. And it says, starting at verse 1, we're going to read verses 1 through 5, then verse 7, and then verse 10, and we'll conclude our reading there. So it says, Who have believed our report, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of dry ground. He have no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised, and rejected of men, a man of sorrow and acquainted with grief. And we hid as if it were our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken and smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He has brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shears is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He had put on him to grief. He had put him to grief, excuse me. And when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hands. Again, for emphasis, verse three, he is despised and rejected of man, men, a man of sorrow and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. And the first part again for emphasis or to reemphasize, he is despised and rejected of men. So when we talk about rejection, we talk about the horrors, the horrificness of it. We talk about the spirit, the mindset, uh, and all those things that go along with it. We know that many of us who have experienced rejection know that this is a very serious emotional thing that we go through. It impacts us in so many different ways. But the Bible said that Jesus is not a high priest that cannot feel the infirmities or our infirmities. The Bible lets us know that he was tempted in every single point as we were, but yet without sin. 
We also know that Jesus experienced a lot of the various things that we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. He dealt with rejection. He dealt with being ostracized. He dealt with people rejecting his statements and the things that he said, the miracles that he has done. But he was the giver of life. He was the son and is the son of the living God. He's the one that came to secure our souls and our salvation. But yet the Bible lets us know that he was despised. He is despised, was despised, and rejected of men. And we all know factually that he is still yet being rejected of men even until this very day. But when we talk about rejection, we have to talk about the serious emotional impact that comes along with it and the various things that the Lord himself want us as his people to be delivered from. And Jesus deals with the whole man. Psalms 27 says, when father and mother forsakes me, the Lord will take me up. So dealing with rejection, God and Jesus Christ deal with rejection all the time. So let's talk it from the biblical aspect, how God was rejected by his people. And even in 1 Samuel, when Samuel was a little bit upset and perturbed with the people of God because they were asking for a king, Samuel thought that they had rejected him. But God let him know, they didn't reject you. They're rejecting me. And because they have rejected me, I will grant them their petition and give them a king. And he gave them certain things that a king would require of them and the burden that a king would place on them. But God's burden for them was light. But we have to understand with rejection, God could have taken it a whole different way and reacted by wiping out those who chose to ask for a king. And even sometimes with the spirit of rejection, there is a retaliatory measure that comes along with that, that many of us, have sought, have thought about, seriously contemplated, and some of us have even acted on those retaliatory thought processes. Oh yes, let's deal with that. <laughs> we have dealt with retaliation based upon our rejection. We have been vindictive, we have been embittered, we have been angry, and we have been moved to actions that are less than godly. Some of us have sought to wound people. Some of us have sought to even verbally abuse people. Some of us have even sought out situations to embarrass people. Some of us have even set people up to fall into ensnarements and traps that we've set. We have manipulated, we have plotted, we have schemed, we have joined allegiance with other folks, and we've set out to put our plot in motion. Never minding the damaging, bitter impacts that it would have on people. Instead of coming to God and asking God to heal us, to deliver us, to set us free, and make us all the more wiser because of the hurt and the pain that we felt when it comes to rejection. Listen, we have been rejected in many areas of our lives. Some of us have been rejected as children by our parents, grandparents. Some of us have been called stupid, ignorant, that you would never amount to anything, and have been abandoned. And even when it came to privileges, you were rejected. Some of us have been rejected by previous relationships, 
marital relationships. And we have not gotten over the bitterness and the anger, anger or the rejection of it. Some of us, it's been years. Some of us have been rejected by siblings. Some of us have been rejected by co-workers. And listen, even by those in the household of faith. By pastors. Pastors rejecting folk. Even congregants rejecting pastors. There is a lot going on with rejection. Even our children who are being bullied in school. It is a form of rejection. And sometimes the persons doing the bullying are bullying because of their own personal rejections. And some of us have been so rejected that we have deep emotional and spiritual pain within our hearts, within our soul, and in our lives. Psychiatrists have stated that pain, the pain of rejection, can cause pain in the brain. And I want to take it even further. Pain in the soul. Which means that we are constantly dealing and focusing on these things, these pain points, on a day-to-day -day basis. We are constantly focusing and thinking and meditating and regurgitating and living through the pain excessively. Why keep putting yourself through the emotional thought processes? when we have one that can free us from that pain. His name is Jesus Christ. His name is Jesus Christ. And what Jesus wishes, wishes for us to do is to come to him and to earnestly seek him through prayer. Now, some of you may say, I prayed. How earnestly have you sought the Father in prayer, continuously in prayer until he acts and moves to remove that pain from out of your heart? from out of your soul. Rejection hurts, not only just physically, mentally, but also physically. The mind is a very powerful thing that is in our bodies that communicates various signals and things, and causes chemicals to be produced that generates such emotions that those chemicals overall can have an impact over our physical body. Not only the pains in our hearts, but the pain throughout our bodies, muscular, circulatory system our digestive system, even our ability to sleep and get restful, peaceful sleep, even to be at peace during our awake hours. God does not wish, nor does he desire, nor does he want that type of emotional or physical pain in our lives, Jesus came that we might be free 
from all that binds us, hurts us, wounds us, controls us, defeats us, and demoralizes us. He came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. This is where people become emotionally distraught because of the pain that they're experiencing. The pain of agony. This is where people lash out at others, becoming bitter. Sometimes you have to wonder why people are so bitter in their hearts, in their souls. What transpired? We know that many things can transpire. But the bitterness, the pain of bitterness from rejection is one that runs deep into the soul. It impacts a person's quality of life and it inflicts its poisonous venom on unsuspecting innocent people who have no clue about why this is being taken out on them. Let's ask ourselves some really deep introspective questions. Why am I so bitter? Why am I so angry? Why have I been rejected? Sometimes you may not have the answers for those. But praying those questions <clears throat> to the Lord, he will generate answers. And better yet, as we stated, deliverance. Listen, lack of sleep, feeling hopeless, social pain. Some people don't like to socialize. They become reclusive. They become tr extremely introverted. And they've run away from societal opportunities to interact with others because they have been rejected so severely. Even looking up, looking into the eyes of others, fidgeting, the body language, reeks that this person is hurting and have been rejected. They have fear trusting people because they know if someone comes into their lives, this person can and may or will ultimately reject them. <clears throat> and sometimes that rejection comes based on their own posture and their word choices and statements that they make that are designed to communicate their hurt, their lack of trust, and ultimately repels people. And they have no clue why sometimes they're repelling folks. But listen, they're repelling of people is a very clear indicator of their hurt and of their pain. And God doesn't want that to be. Sometimes people, because of their rejections, don't feel as they will measure up to anyone's standards because one of the reasons why they were rejected because people have communicated that socially, emotionally, verbally, educationally, financially, how you dress, where you live, what you attend, what you associate with, isn't good enough to be a part of someone else's life. How dare us 
to communicate such a thing to someone when God has created all men in his own image and his own likeness, which the Bible tells us in the book of Genesis. Some people are rejected because of their skin tone. We have to open up our eyes, people of God, and understand that even if we're imposing or inflicting rejection, that this is a grand opportunity before the very presence of our Father God and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to repent. Even as I was preparing this morning, God said it's an opportunity for repentance. We have to repent from the people that we wounded, that we've hurt, because we have rejected people ourselves. Let's just be honest. The Bible said all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So where we have rejected folks, we now have to move into accepting folks. Repentance is a 180 degree turn from the former negative, unproductive, unfruitful, malicious, vicious, heinous sin that we practice to now walk to please God and accept and embrace those that no one else would embrace, to love them the way that God prescribes love in the Bible. Because the Bible declares that love covers a multitude of sin. Love them, embrace them, take on the acts mentality that all believers had all things in common and they fellowship together, breaking of the bread and studying of the scripture and hearing what the apostles had to share with them. There was no big I and no little you. There was commonality amongst the believers. No one was rejected. The Bible says in Ephesians, until we all come into the unity of the faith, where rejection has absolutely no place. People feel who have been rejected feel worthless. They feel as though they have no value and they cannot be a productive contributing part of society, of a business, in church, or in relationships. They are extremely valuable. We all are extremely valuable because we're created, again, in God's own image. We don't have to worry about the lingering effects of rejection. We don't have to worry about feeling worth, worthless or unworthy of love and respect and dignity, feeling that others are better than us, and attempts are trying to figure out what's wrong with us because we have been rejected. We don't have to deal with loneliness and isolation or the continual thought process of what others think, think or feel about us or even the spirit spirit of bullying, which many of our children are dealing with in the classroom, in schools, on the buses that they ride to school, and on social media. Parents, pay attention to your child. If they're going through drastic behavioral issues, Perhaps they're being rejected and bullied on at school. 
or in other social settings that you need to keep your eyes attentive to and see and anoint your child with oil. Pray over them and investigate what they're saying. Ask them questions. Sit them down and talk to them. Make them feel comfortable to talk to you as their parents. Allow them to be vocal and express what they're going through without condemning, listening, and assuring them by taking the appropriate actions to address it, not volatile actions. But seek God or in order to pursue and how to pursue. Ask for godly wisdom and understanding and approach those to whom you need to approach in boldness, but with the love and the character of God. Be wise as serpents, but as meek as a dove and letting the devil know at every single situation you will not damage my child. You will not destroy my child. This is where the spirit of suicide come in for a lot of young people because they feel as though this is the only out that they have when they're experiencing the spirit of rejection to this very degree. They think about killing themselves with a gun, with pills, with hanging, and other methods. Don't take your child's communication lightly. Listen with the ears of a concerned child of God and know that God is on your side. Listen, even being told by parents and significant others you won't amount to anything or being called stupid or ignorance, thoughts of being mentally, academically, and emotionally unfit or unstable. Open up, and this is where it gets very dangerous. Where a child who has been rejected begin to live in a fantasy world. They withdraw from reality to create a fantasy world that they begin to live in and function in and find acceptance in. And they could be lost to an emotional state that the devil would play upon and use and ultimately seek to destroy that child's emotional state. Dangerous thought processes, shutting down and being unproductive. How do we overcome rejection? We have to know Jesus Christ has paid it all. We already read in Isaiah where he is despised and rejected of men, but a man of sorrow. Many of us, just like Joseph, who was despised and rejected by his brothers, have been rejected because there is a greater purpose to our lives. There is purpose. And when the devil can see your purpose, he will reject you and cause others to reject you so that your head will not be lifted up above your enemies. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? He is the Lord God, strong and mighty and battle. The secret to overcoming rejection is trust in the Lord 
Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ wishes for you to take into your spirit the fact that he has come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Why did you repeat this so frequently during the course of this message, Pastor? Because many of you have been rejected, aren't living the abundant life. Listen, many of you as believers have dealt with the spirit of rejection and still are. You're living in that mindset today. And you know the abundant life that the Lord has for you. Today, by this word of the Lord, it is meant for you to come out of that mindset. Release that burden and free yourself to walk into victory. This is Pastor Whitfield saying that I love you all. And my only heart's desire in God is for you to be free. I know because the Lord dealt with me, myself, about rejection. And to him who will overcome God will reestablish joy, happiness, peace, contentment, fulfillment, productivity, and social acceptance. And listen to this. You are already accepted by the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, embrace your freedom and your liberty in Jesus Christ. God bless you all, and have a wonderful week in the Lord. And we'll see you here next Wednesday. In Jesus' name, God bless.